Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. You're watching part one of the off-grid water tower build. So if you want to see how I build this off-grid water system, then continue watching. My first task is to lay out an eight foot two by six. I'm going to use this as a measuring device so that I can mark out the distance between where I need to dig. So I want to dig at both ends and then put one in the middle as well. So I'm gonna have six supports in total. Now that I have this marked out, I can then begin to dig right here towards the end of it for my post. I'm gonna use a tape measure to find the four foot mark on this board so that I can also dig right there as well. I have the first three holes dug. So one's here, four foot, eight foot. So now I've got a 10 foot two by eight that I'm gonna cut down to eight foot and three inches. That extra three inches is gonna allow us to attach the side pieces on with a little extra support. So let's go ahead and cut this now. I'm using two by eights because I feel like this water tower is going to be quite heavy if I put uh, 660 gallons on top. I'm gonna be using four by fours as my support posts here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put these down into the hole. I've got, uh, this one's a shorter one. It's gonna be on the uphill. And then I can put these taller ones here in the lower side. I'm just gonna plop these in here. And uh, I'll have to probably cut off the top one a little bit to match up with this one down here. And uh, just to make sure I have them level, I'm going to attach a board between them, level it out, and then I can uh, cut down as needed. So let me get the next one in here. Should have brought some clamps up here to make this job a little easier. I sank the first post into the ground and have tamped it out so it is nice and solid. And then I have put this two by eight up here and I've got it leveled out so that uh, hopefully we'll be good to have that tank up here. So you'll notice that this post right here needs to be cut off some and so does this one. And then this one down here will be good because it's got a little extra up there. Um, so I'm also going to be notching out the back side over here. So I need to uh, mark in an inch and a half and then up to the top. And that's gonna be done on all three of these. Now that I have the post where I want it, I'm backfilling with some dirt, using a stick to tamp this down. And then I'm able to uh, make sure this is not gonna go anywhere. I've taken my speed square and I've matched up where I need to cut here. So for instance, right here, I need to cut the top off of this. And then I've measured an inch and a half over on the side so that I can uh, then basically cut out the notch for this right here. So uh, for instance, I need to mark right here and then I can uh, go down to match up my other mark. There we go. So I'm gonna take the top off of this and then cut out that notch for this two by eight. It's taken a while, but I finally have all three posts up and I have the uh, notches cut. So I'm just going to match this up and put some screws in the back to hold it in place. And then later I will come back with some uh, nice lag bolts and keep this into position. But for now, just these little screws should be enough.
The first side is now complete. So you can see they are sunk down in the ground. Four by fours come up. A two by eight is resting on the notch and they are all connected together. So I have to come back and put a couple of lag bolts in here and then uh, maybe a couple of nails as well. And so now I need to come over here and do the other set of three that will match up to these. And so uh, it'll be the exact same as this. To get the next side installed, I need to know my distance between right here and over here. And I want that to be a total of four feet. So I'm gonna cut my next two by eight at 46 and a half inches. And that's gonna allow for this board right here. And then the other side will have one as well. And that'll basically give me four foot in between here. So let's go ahead and cut this one at 46 and a half. And once again, I'm just using the boards to make the mark for where my next holes are gonna be. I need to do one in the middle and then one on each side. This took a lot more fiddling than I was anticipating, but I've managed to get the base frame done. So if you were to step right here on the edge, you can see just how level this is. So that's really good. And I went ahead and got the sideboards on. So uh, this right here looks just like the other side. I've notched out all three of the supports before putting this on there. And so uh, I need to go back now and put a bunch of nails on all these sides. I've also got some uh, corner plates to put in here for extra support. Uh, just because this is gonna have probably about 600 gallons of water, which is uh, several thousand pounds. So I wanna make sure it's nice and strong. But as you can see, this part of it is done. I'm gonna go take a break for a while. I'm back out here on day three for the water tower build. So now that I have the base frame constructed, everything is leveled out, I'm gonna start putting a whole bunch of these three and a half 16D nails. They are galvanized for the treated lumber and uh, being exposed to the outdoors. Uh, so I'm just gonna put a bunch of these all over the place to lock this down and hopefully keep it from um, having any issues when there are uh, 600 gallons up here. So anyway, I also have these uh, corner braces, which will go right in here and uh, hopefully get this even more secure so that it's never gonna have any issues with uh, tumbling over. Basically, I want this to last for a very long time. And uh, so I'm gonna be using these inch and a half nails for these plates right here. So that's the task we're gonna tackle right now. After putting all the nails on the outside, this frame already seems rock solid. So these uh, corner brackets may be overkill, but I still think I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, a, because I've already purchased them, and B, because uh, 660 gallons is a lot of water. <laughs> well, that didn't work. <laughs> I just wrapped up getting all the metal supports on the corners and in the middle posts as well. That may be a little bit of overkill. I'm not entirely sure, but at least we've got that extra support because it is gonna be about two tons of water sitting up here. So hopefully it'll be uh, sufficient. Okay, so the next step, I want to put two by sixes up top. And so it's gonna span from right here across to the other side. And then I want to move over here where the edge of the tote's gonna be. And I wanna add two more supports going from this side over to there. And that way another two by six can sit on top of that. So it'll basically have the front edge that will be supportive and then those two pieces as well. So I think it's gonna have enough support underneath. Of course, all of these are notched on the four by four. And so that can support a lot of weight. So uh, let me go ahead and cut a board to go from right here to that side over there. And we can nail from over here and into this board over here 
around that plate, of course. So this should be somewhere close to four foot. We've got uh, 47 inch right there, good. So with the uh, extra board, we do get a little bit over the four foot. So it'd be plenty of room inside of here uh, for that IBC tote that I've got. Anyway, so 47 inch is what we need right here. I had a couple of boards from my previous water tower and they are uh, too short to go the full span across here. So I'm just gonna cut off the ends that were uh, previously used. Now I need to find out where uh, 47 inches is. So I won't be able to use this for two boards, but at least I'll be able to use it up uh, for this project. I probably could have dropped my uh, corner braces down a bit to give me more room to install this, but it's a bit late now. So maybe on your build you can remember that. To span across this gap, I'm gonna cut a two by six. So I've got an eight foot over here that I'm just gonna cut in half. My distance here is just a little bit over the four foot, so I'm just gonna have a little gap there on the front, but it should be no problem. All right, I think right there, I'm gonna just put a bunch of nails in that to uh, lock it all into place. The 330 gallon IBC tote that I'm working with is 47 inch this direction. So here we've got uh, uh, 50 inch, so we're good this way. And over here, it is 39 inch. So I'm going to take a little bit over center on this side and move over here. And I'm just going to mark the 39 inch right here. And so that is where I want the center of the other board to be. And that way, whenever I uh, put this up here, I have a little bit of wiggle room left and right to get this up. So I'm gonna be cutting another board to go across here. So approximately uh, 46 and three quarter. And so then I'm gonna be taking these joist hangers. I'm gonna do two boards here. So I'll put one right here, and then we've got five and a half inches to deal with over here so anyway i'm gonna put the other one right over there and we'll have the two boards running this way so i'll be able to anchor with all of these holes and then go in from back here and that should give us enough support on those two boards for the next top piece anyway um, i think having that with the cross piece on top and then also i'm planning on putting a, a board right here as well to bring this up to the other side height and so it'll just have a big box to sit on all the way around. I've cut a short two by four that I'm gonna use kind of, I guess, as a scab up under here, just to give me a little extra uh, board to uh, nail into. I'm gonna actually use some screws just to hold this in place before I put some nails. And then I've got some scrap boards left over from when I cut the uh, boards earlier. And these should just fit in here like this. Uh, but before I get these uh, installed, I'm gonna just put some nails up under here to make sure that, that board is nice and secure. And this board right here can go up on top. I'm gonna kind of uh, straddle the center of the two boards, but I'm gonna mostly put the nails into the main support on the back. I can definitely tell that I'm getting tired. I hit the gym this morning for an hour and a half, yesterday for an hour and a half, and then uh, swinging this hammer, getting tired. Okay, one more of these, we'll call it good. And that's gonna be all for today. I have finished this one side completely, and I'm gonna hold off on finishing this other side because I don't know for sure if I'm gonna have the same brand of IBC tote, and I don't wanna make it too wide or too narrow for um, supporting that. So I've got the extra board over here that it's needed to, um, to make this double strip um, to support, but I don't want to put it on there until I have that other tote. 
Um, so let's kind of take a look at what's been done here. So first of all, I dug down about two feet for each of these four by fours, came up, and then I notched out the board right over here. And that uh, is gonna be where most of the weight is for this uh, water. And so that goes the full eight foot and three inches across. And so each of those four by fours is uh, notched out the same. Uh, so then this board over here is nailed in from this side, from this side, and that should be enough. I've got the board on top. And so to make that support, you can see I've got the two up under here. Yeah, so I've nailed from the inside and from the outside over here on that board. And so that's gonna support this really well. I don't see that being an issue at all for this one. Um, then you come over here and I've done kind of the same thing, except I've added those uh, brackets there. Now I just did uh, a single nail in this way and over in here. And then I've got uh, at least, what was it, two nails out here. Yeah, so two nails out there. So that's uh, six nails per board. So hopefully that's gonna be enough. It's got two of them. And uh, anyway, so that's unfinished, but we'll get to that at some point later. Now my previous water tower, I used old wood to build that. And then it sat up here on the hill for a couple of years. And this board right here, is one of those old boards. So I think to prevent that uh, from happening again, I'm going to uh, paint all of this. So usually I don't have a project that's done enough to paint, but I want to keep this one for a long time because I feel like it is well built. So I'll bring some paint up here, put a coat on this, and then we will um, drag the IBC tote up. I'll put it on the uh, back of the four-wheeler trailer and uh, we can clear a couple of the trees right here and just drive straight on in and uh, deliver that for up here. I may get uh, somebody to help me lift it up onto the platform because it's pretty heavy. But anyway, um, I'll bring you back for another video and we will see this thing painted and get that IBC tote up here and hopefully get the ram pump going and bring water up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got some comments on how I built this or if you think it's going to fall apart or if it's overbuilt, leave those down below. I'm Seth with Landa House and I will see you in the next video. Bye.